Have you ever wondered how to actually heal from narcissistic abuse or wondered if it's even possible? It absolutely is. And by the end of this video, you will have real steps on how to do just that. Hi, I'm Rebecca Zong, top 1% attorney and the best-selling author of the books Negotiate Like You Matter and Breaking Free, a step-by-step -step divorce guide. And I've helped thousands of people go from lives of drama, trauma, and chaos to step into lives of freedom, possibility, and purpose. And I do the same thing for you right here in these videos and on this channel. So make sure that you've subscribed, you've hit that notification bell, and that way you will get notified every time I upload brand new videos and new content, which I do pretty frequently. So today you're in for a treat. This is part one of my conversation with Dr. Judy Rosenberg, who has pioneered the absolutely incredible mind map, which actually gives you real steps on how to go from where you are now and feeling just awful and traumatized and beat up and used and abused to getting to that life, to actually feeling healed and actually creating a brand new life for yourself. This is part one of my interview with Dr. Judy Rosenberg. So without further ado, let's dive in to part one. Hi, Judy Rosenberg. I have Dr. Judy Rosenberg here. Welcome to my show, Negotiate Your Best Life. I'm so excited to have you here with me today. Thank you. You are a... Uh, so accomplished and you do all kinds of things in the field of psychology, but specifically on how to heal quickly from the trauma and the PTSD that people have felt from dealing with narcissists or having a narcissist in their life or in a relationship with narcissists for even years at a time. Yes. You've, you've come up with some incredible tools for people to heal from that. So I want to get into all of that. But first, Judy, tell us more about you, more about your background, how you got where you are. Sure. Um, so just a little bit about my, my cultural background. I was born in Budapest, Hungary. I'm a survivor of Holocaust uh, wow. parents. And, Amazing. Yeah. And my mission since uh, since I was a little girl, was to heal the world. I just thought that if I personally don't heal the world, the world is going to blow up. So can you imagine the responsibility? Oh my if I don't do something, you know, if I don't do something, everybody's going to blow up. So oh I think God. it started somewhere in there at a very early age. And then um, I, like yourself, I had children. I have two grown sons and a beautiful grandson, beautiful family. And uh, I think my first experience was narciss with narcissism uh, was that I didn't even know it was narcissism. I thought it was normal, the way my, my family talked to each other. Um, the, um, uh, basically, here, I'll give you my definition of narcissism. In a nutshell, it's a system gone wrong where the parents put their feelings before the child. I just thought that was normal. So... Um, I up to a point, but then I started questioning it. There's something wrong here. And so um, having had a lot of experience with narcissists, both within my family and in the friendship circle and uh, in, in various relationships, I soon learned that there was a pattern going on there. And then I got very interested in where that pattern came from and what the blueprint was behind it. And so I was always a kind of a causal think thinker. I was more interested in why is this the way it is? Why are people constantly choosing the same dynamics? Why are they const constantly being tripped up by uh, certain insults and certain treatment. So um, it, this was a, a, an evolution back in 2002. I was taking a Kabbalah course. Oh, I'm that's so funny. Here. I took Kabbalah as well. You did? Wow. I did. Wow. I studied Kabbalah for a couple of years, actually, in like 2005 okay. to 2007, somewhere around in there. Okay, well, interestingly enough, I started doodling a little solution to um, healing global disconnect, and it was following the creation model, creation, destruction, reintegration. 
And so it became my mind map. And it was meant to heal global disconnect. Never did I think that it would be my psychological model. And I had a plan to launch this global project called Join the Human Race, Healing Global Disconnect. And it didn't quite turn out that way because um, I didn't have the budget to launch a global project. I didn't know how to do it. And so I thought, okay, it's an interesting model. I think I'll try it on my patients on the micro level. And that's where the, uh, the mind map, that's how the mind map was born. And then the specialty of narcissism evolved because I didn't really know that so many people were injured in this way until I started getting call after call after call. And then the popularity about narcissism, covert narcissism, overt narcissism grew. And then by then people were saying, <clears throat> I'm a mess. I don't know what happened, but I feel completely diminished. What can I do to heal? And yeah, I mean, narcissists literally suck the life out of you. I mean, they literally are like leeches. Yes. I call it the vampiring effect. Yeah. I, I, you know, I didn't even realize that until I was dealing with narcissists of my own, but I literally, one in particular that I had to deal with, I felt like was literally draining the life out of me yes and 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 i i said it's like a leech but i yep. had not not i didn't even have the vocabulary to go oh it's an energy vampire or it's this or it's that i didn't even i hadn't studied anything about narcissism yet i just knew that that's how i felt well over time i developed a vocabulary vocabulary and the vocabulary includes words like psychovirus and the vampiring effect and the double dungeon of darkness where you cannot turn to your mother, you cannot turn to your father. So basically you're checkmated in your emotions. And so you start uh, degenerating because you don't have the inner strength. You don't have the core sense of self. As you were uh, talking about earlier, you were talking about how this empty shell needs to be fed all the time. So the parents are supposed to do that in the first phase of life. And if that's not done, there's this hollowness and emptiness. And I just lost you there. Hello, hello, hello. Nobody to turn to. Um, so I just want I, hey, to, hey, uh, um, hold on one second because uh, Judy, okay. can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, you froze. Yeah. And so I didn't hear anything after hollowness or emptiness. So if you could just okay. go back. So let me yeah. just go back and start recording again. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So there's this hollowness and emptiness. Yeah, so I call it a double dungeon of darkness because how we form our core sense of self, uh, we blueprint off of our parents. They're supposed to give us eye contact, skin contact, um, attunement, mirroring, breastfeeding, etc. And if we don't get those elements, I call it psychological nutrients. If we don't get those psychological nutrients, then we're not really building that core sense of self. And if we don't have anybody to turn to, uh, then we um, will start borrowing energy, that vampiring that takes place. And we borrow people's energy because we don't want to, the person doesn't want to collapse inside. And so that's where the other person will feel sucked dry. That's such a, a, a beautiful way of describing it because they, they just have this little inner fragile ego that they need to, they just feel like they need to constantly feed externally with this narcissistic supply. And they, and that's how they do it. They, by, by pulling it from other people, but it's this black hole. It can never be filled. That's correct. Right. And, and, and they can never heal. I mean, they're not, they can't be rehabilitated. They, they can't, 
the, the, what, what I'm finding is that most people will fire their therapist because they don't want to go there. They don't want to go into the hole in the soul. They've survived that way. Um, it's a very, very difficult journey because you have to wake, uh, awaken or develop empathy. Without empathy, you can't truly connect to another human being. And so when empathy has been burned out of your system, um, or never even taught as a model, then, um, then, then you're operating on a whole new level, then it's power and control. So you don't have faith in human connection. So if you don't have faith in human connection, let's buy some pretty objects, let's play with people, let's use this person or that person to muster up a sense of, of self. So it's a really, really ugly game and um, it, it ends up breaking down into chaos, defenses, and then the final breakdown, because systems that are not sustain sustainable, as you know, they, co they collapse. Yeah, and that's the discard phase. That's the discard phase, correct. Yeah. Right. And, and during the discard phase, you, I mean, you still see them coming back and love bombing and all that sort of thing, because the love bomb is really a, a methodology of control that they use. Yeah, because they just want to put you in formaldehyde. They want you up on the shelf, and then they want Betty or Larry or Henry or whoever all up there waiting for them to um, reconnect. Because as, as you mentioned, the other side of the coin is that they often pair with empaths. They often pair with people who have been injured at a causal level, and they too have not received the, the um, emotional supplies from their parents, and they have abandonment issues. So when you um, pull up their abandonment issues, they're very, very ready to hang on again or reconnect with a toxic tie because love in any form in this particular dynamic is better than no love at all. So they will play on that. And it is really, really disastrous for the person who is involved with the narcissist because it's a never ending game until somebody intercepts the game and uh, pulls the plug on the lies and um, systems gone wrong that make up for this entire dance. Absolutely. So you have developed this uh, incredible mind map that you created for healing. And I wanted to go through it because I think it's really a genius what you've put together. And it, it, if people use it in you know, working with you or somebody from your team, yeah. you actually say that they can see results within 12 weeks. The, the mind map is designed to take place in 10 sessions. Oh, and 10 sessions. I thought 10 sessions. And then there's usually a little bit of follow-up. So you're not wrong with the 12 weeks. Sometimes I like to spread it out so that they recontact me a couple of weeks after the 10 weeks or maybe three or three weeks later. Um, so in essence, the mind map is a from through to model. From the past and the encodings of the past through dismantling the here and now and the effects on the psyche to healing, reconnecting and paradigm shifting out of the mess. So that's the game plan, takes place in 10 sessions. Unlike traditional therapy, the sessions are very, very, um, they're very um, um, specific. So session number one, no mystery, we're gonna talk about childhood wounds and how the individual was wounded by the blueprint, mom, dad, I call it the cause. Mom and dad are the cause. Now I want to distinguish cause from fault because this is multi-generational. So it's important to know that uh, the parents also psychologically inherited their bad blueprint and passed it along to the people to us, everybody, multi-generationally, because nobody comes out of childhood wound-free. It's just impossible. And so we've got to locate it at that level. So the five childhood wounds are physical abuse, sexual abuse, um, verbal abuse, neglect, and control smothering. 
and these wounds affect people in different ways. So by um, going back into that area and discovering who done it, what happened, and what age, people then have a, an idea of why they're feeling what they're feeling. And then we, we have to go back into the amygdala, which is the reaction to the wounds, because all of this material is unconscious. And that's why cognitive behavioral therapy is not enough, because it merely uh, addresses the cognitions, which are the conscious um, messages that we store in panel three, which are the encodings, but what is often missed is the preverbal, the unconscious material, which is what the baby is absorbing and the subtle messages that they're incorporating into the fiber of their being. <clears throat> so if a mother neglects the child or the child is um, not mirrored or attuned to them, the child may go inward because it doesn't have the ability to call themselves out because that's the parent's job. So imagine the messages going on here, not cognitive, but definitely received. I'm not lovable, I'm not wanted, I'm not important, I don't matter, I'm not effectual, there's this hopelessness, I'm uncomfortable, the amygdala is reacting because there are no words here, so the baby's crying, the baby is having stomach aches and um, uh, te muscle tension, and um, then eventually learned helplessness. Martin Seligman learned helplessness. helplessness. The baby realizes that he or she has no agency in the world. So now I'm on panel three. So now the encoding is, I'm, I'm powerless have no meaning in life. I'm not lovable. I'm not good enough. I don't matter. These are the lies that we have to identify because what happens in childhood is the, ch the, the baby will identify with how the parents see them because we see ourselves in the eyes of our mothers and fathers. That's how we self-define. And if we don't have a very good mirror that we're staring at, we're in trouble. Thanks for watching this part one of my interview with Dr. Judy Rosenberg. If you're getting ready to negotiate with a narcissist, you're definitely going to want to grab my free Crush My Negotiation Prep Worksheet. You can grab it at the link below or just go to winmynegotiation.com and it will be all yours. And if you like this video, give me a like, give me a share, drop me a comment. Let me know that you were here. And if you want additional support and you're dealing with narcissists, come on over and join me in my free private Facebook group called Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, now's a great time to do that. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and that way you'll get notified when I upload part two of this incredible conversation with Dr. Judy Rosenberg. I'm so glad that you were here and that you stopped by my channel. Remember that today's a great day to start negotiating your best life. I'll see you in the next video.